Intonation is the rising and the falling pitch in one's voice. Many English learners assume that all English questions have a rising pitch and all statements in English have a falling pitch. In fact, it's not correct. The intonation patterns have more nuances than you think. What are the rules of English intonation? I'll get you covered in this video. When it comes to the following six types of sentences, you have to choose the proper intonation patterns. One, certainty and uncertainty. When you finish a thought or you're certain about something, you use falling intonation on focus words in thought groups. When are you available to meet? I'm free anytime this week. Great. How about tomorrow morning? That works for me. See you then. In contrast, a rising intonation at the end of a thought group shows uncertainty, surprise, or a desire for confirmation. It looks like today is your mother's birthday. Today is my mother's birthday? Two, tag questions. Tag questions are statements that end with a short question. The short question at the end can either have a rising or falling pitch. They are used to either confirm information or to ask for clarification. If you think you know something but want confirmation from the listener, let a voice fall in a question tag. She's not coming in, is she? She's not coming in, is she? You live in China, don't you? You live in China, don't you? If you believe something might be true but you are not sure, let a voice rise in the question tag so the listener knows that you want more information. She's not coming in, is she? She's not coming in, is she? You live in China, don't you? You live in China, don't you? Three, yes or no questions. The pitch typically rises at the end of a yes or no question. Did you understand that? Do you have Dave's phone number? Are you going on vacation? Four, request for clarifications. When you ask for a clarification of what someone else has said, a rising pitch is used at the end of the phrase. I need to pick up her apartment key today. When? Today. The rising pitch shows that Liddy wants Amy to repeat the same information because Liddy didn't hear what Amy said or she doesn't believe what Amy said. I need to pick up her apartment key today. When? 3 p.m. The falling pitch is a signal that Liddy asks for new information. So instead of saying today, Amy said 3 p.m. 5. Choice questions. These are questions that include a list of options. Look at the following question. You may use two different intonation patterns to express different meanings. Would you like coffee or tea? Would you like coffee or tea? In the first example, I'm offering only the choices of coffee or tea. It's a closed choice question. So in a closed question, you need to raise your pitch on the first option and let it fall after the final option. Would you like coffee or tea? Mm? 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 In the second example, coffee and tea are examples of what you could have, but they are not the entire set of options. It's an open choice question. So in an open question, you don't change your pitch on the first option, but raise it after the final option. Would you like coffee or tea? Six WH questions. These are the questions that begin with the words who, what, where, when, why, and how. These questions typically end in the falling pitch. Where should we go for dinner? What time's the meeting? When did you get here? How old is your daughter? Da -da 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 -da. To learn more about how intonation affects meaning in a conversation, watch some British and American television shows. Here are my picks of the six best TV shows to learn English with. I hope you love this tutorial. I'm Xiaobingbao. Bye!